it didn't feel real. I didn't want it to be real. I didn't know how to handle it. My thought was just, please don't die. You don't think that they would happen to someone you know and that you love. I was aware that there was a, a crash there. The lady involved um, wasn't looking good and probably won't survive, at which point I then heard the name. We need to let Richard know. As soon as I heard that, yeah, I knew 100% who they were talking about. So I just came up on the radio and, and told them I'd do it. I just had the knock on the door. One of my friends who I'd grown up with for years, he was the police sergeant in Mount Barker and I'd only seen him the day before at the football game and said we've got to catch up and when he came to the door I thought he was catching up. When he's looking at me and I'm nearly in tears, um, yeah, he, he knew this was uh, yeah, the, the news you don't want to get. Basically came straight out and told him that Holly's been in a, you know, in a serious sprain, may not survive and that um, he needs to get down to the hospital. You go numb. If there's any serious injuries or is she going to make it, you just don't, you just don't know. You... And two missed calls from Dad. So I listened to the voicemail um, and that sort of made me panic a fair bit and then I spotted him on the phone and he sort of explained that Holly had been in a car accident um, and that she's on her way to the RA, RAH and so is he. On my way down to the hospital with, with Dad in the car, um, pulled up to get fuel down the bottom of the freeway and I was just sat in the car and I actually saw Holly's ambulance drive past with the lights on and that was a really sort of harrowing feeling. You know, we were told Holly might not make it. I kind of felt a little bit selfish, but I didn't think I would cope with that in my life. Sorry. Holly had a combination of injuries that including a significant head injury, which was making her quite agitated and confused. Um, and in that sort of context, patients are reluctant to lie still and, and allow interventions to be done. I was expecting Holly to maybe need to get a leg amputated or um, that she's got a spinal injury and that she's um, going to be a paraplegic. She was in an induced coma by the time um, I actually got to saw her, or see her, I should say. So the doctor come out. By putting somebody to sleep, we take away the pain associated with, with breathing and we can do the breathing for them with a ventilator, which removes some of the work. But at the same time, she was also still in a critical condition, so we, we didn't know if she was going to make a full recovery either. We went in uh, to the uh, emergency room and, and she was just lifeless. My first thing was I need to see her, um, but I wasn't allowed to. I was just super frustrated. I just wanted to go down there and bang on the doors and go in. I followed up to see how she was going because, you know, you, you have your best guess at what her injuries are, but of course it's not until the investigation's at hospital that you know. And I thought I was losing her. It was the worst time of my life. They couldn't get her to come out of the coma properly. She was very combative and very aggressive. They try and take her out and then they take her back in because she just wasn't waking up properly the way they wanted. Holly's thing was always music, loved her music. So I put on, um, so it was a bit of Ja Rule. When she sat straight upright and looked at me and, and she just said, I knew you were looking for me, just couldn't find you. I don't remember much when I woke up out of my coma. I do remember looking down at my legs though and I remember seeing how big they were. I was actually thinking I was going to have to probably spend every waking minute at work to try and earn the money to try and, you know, pay for a lot of stuff. 